Now let's move on to the second part. How to do all of this in Java instead. Let's open up Eclipse. Let's comment all these out. Let's make a new Java project, the real simple one. Let's call it CICI 201x JDBC demo 1.8. There we go. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to import the JDBC driver, the connector that basically makes it possible for you to interact with the SQL database in Java. Now you see I copied it into the uh, into the project folder. Let's do a refresh. There we go. We have to add it to the build path. And keep in mind, if you want to use it in JSPs, you also have to add it to the deployment assembly. I don't have the deployment assembly option in this menu because this is not a dynamic web project. Let's add jars. Should be in here. There we go. Apply and close. There we go. And let's, of course, create a new package with our excellent naming convention. Let's create a new main class. That's the main class. And let's create a separate class just to deal with the connections. And let's call it SQL Util. First, how do we establish the connection? I'm going to have a static final string equals. And it's actually going to equal, let me copy and paste that over. It's a long one. This is certainly going to be different when it comes to Google Cloud, but I'm not using Google Cloud for this tutorial. so. Just keep in mind that what you guys are going to do is going to be different from this one. And let me briefly explain what it is. So this is a, these are the URL schemas, localhost, myself. This is where the uh, local MySQL server is running on, port 3306. The database name, the user and the password of my uh, database, no encryption some kind of uh, time code and the server time zone. Otherwise, if I don't put these, sometimes it works, sometimes other times it complains. So I'll just leave it in. Now with that out of the way, let's also make a static connection object imported from java.sql connection. And before we can do any, before we can perform any action on the database, we have to Make, con make a connection first. So that's what this does, init connection. It does what it says. So if connection doesn't equal to null. So what if, if we call it after we've already connected, then let's just notify ourselves somehow that warning has already been established. And let's return right away. Otherwise, let's try to make a connection. I'm gonna try cache block. We have to first load our driver, the jar file that we just imported, that is. This name is the name of the driver. And it shouldn't be too different from this. So this is a newer version, as you can see, is the uh, 8.0 version. There's also a lower version that may work, but I think in order to work with the lower version, you have to remove the CJ in the name, and that's all. That basically loads this class. And now what we can do is connection equals driver manager dot get connection. And the URL will be our credentials. 
and that's it. Let's print the stack trace. And if you, if you really want to be anal about this, uh, it throws two types of exceptions. A class not found exception for this line and a SQL exception for this line. So, and the way that you can combine two cache blocks in the one is by doing classifying exception or SQL exception E. And that takes care of both. So that's our init connection method. And that, that establishes the connection to the database. And next, what we want to do is perhaps we want to be able to add a user. Know that I'm using static for everything because these are utility classes and you don't really need to create an instance of this class first before you can use them. Like they, uh, it just doesn't, you could, but it's not necessary. So for, just for my convenience, I'll just do it this way. I'll make everything static. Add user, takes you in the string, username and string password. And in here, another try cache block. Now, now we have something called a prepared statement. Oh, oops. What is a prepared statement? A prepared statement is a SQL statement that is safe against injection attacks. And you might be asking, what are injection attacks? And let me let me tell you in a bit after I finish typing this line. This is basically the same line as this one. Only with the values marked as question marks. What are injection attacks? All right. SQL injection attack basically means that a user, when a user is inputting some input and you directly append that string into your SQL statement and run it, the user can write the string in a way such that instead of doing what you expect it to do, it can have certain escape characters in it and just starts running off and running commands that the user want to run. You can read more about it elsewhere, and there's a lot of good videos on YouTube. Uh, Tom Scott, I think, or a computer file or something, I think they actually have a good video about this. You can go and check that out. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that too much. Just know that using prepare statement is good. Prepare statement good, other things bad. All right. And you may have seen that we replace our values with question marks. Well, how can we set them? We set them by doing prepared, oops, prepared statement dot set, and you can either set a string, short, int, whatever. You know, depends on the type of the column in in your database, and the parameter index. What is it? And the parameter index, interestingly, you start at one, not zero. It's very interesting, but that's how it is. So one would be this one. Two, and that would be the password. And finally, to execute it, we just do execute. And that's it. And after we execute, let's close it. Just so that, you know, we're, we're good programmers. And you can just leave it as exception, or if you really want it you know, to be specific, that's fine too. SQL exception. And that's how you add a user. Very simple, very straightforward. And we can do, and now let's do the same thing for vehicles. Let me just copy and paste. And set add vehicle. And I only need one argument, details insert into the vehicle registry, details, let's see, is it really details? Detail, uh, singular, there we go. 
and value is just one question mark because there's only one value here. So string detail. And that's that's how you add a vehicle. Now the interesting part. Let's add a vehicle to a user with the foreign keys and everything. Same idea. It's to add vehicle to user. And it's gonna take in int UI not integer string detail. Actually string notes. Or you can call it whatever because it doesn't matter at this stage. Insert into this should be vehicle lookup table. And it's let's say UID VID and notes. And of course three question marks. UID. And you see have to do set int because it's an int. Int. It's vid. And finally, let's do set string. Three. Notes. Execute. Close. Beautiful. Easy, right? Easy peasy. Now that we're now that we're done inserting stuff, how can we get stuff back? How can we do the uh, do the selects and actually try to find stuff within the database? How to fetch information? You can do that too. So you get UID first, and we want to give it a username and. In return, we want to have the ID of the user. It's, it's warning me because I don't have a return value yet. Let's do try. In try, again, prepare a statement, same thing. And let's use the select star from the user registry where username equals question mark and again we can set what a question mark is down here set string one that would be username and take note here we need something called a result set because we're actually getting stuff back and also notice we were supposed to do execute query instead of just execute because we're expecting some results back. And now the way to get stuff out of this result set is results set next. This basically checks if the results if the result set is empty or not. The int uid equals result set dot get int. You see you can either do it by the column index for the label. Let's do a label. It's just easier that way. UID. And after that, since we're uh, we're good programmers, let's close these. Oops. And otherwise, this is return the negative one because there's no negative one. It starts at one for the UIDs, so we know something is wrong for sure. Same idea for vehicle IDs. Oops. Let's do detail. It's just a different table and a different column same thing and then vid instead of uid let's rename these just uh, all right it's that simple now let's try running these shall we let's go back to main and of course because the class is static we don't have to instantiate it and just use them directly in that connection 
this add. Oh, why is it doing this? Add user less add. SAP the password would be no. <laughs> and the second user. Password. Bitter. Let's add some vehicles, shall we? Details. Let's do the same thing. 2016. Mercedes Benz C43 MG 3 liter V6 by turbo. Let's add another one. Add vehicle. 2016 S3 liter V6 by turbo. Did I make a type? Did I make a type somewhere? Oh, I didn't. Okay. And now let's, you'll see that in order to add a vehicle to a user, we need the UID and VID before we can do that. So let's get them first. And luckily, we already wrote methods that can get them. Let's int UID equals the UID and the username we have CP. We can get it for ZQ as well, but. Um, you know, it's the same. Get VID. Let's do this one. And notes. Not sure if anyone's going to get the reference. Yeah, let's give ZQ some cards to show him some love. Notes, nothing, empty. ZQ is a boring per no, I'm joking. All right, and at the very end, let's print something out just to see, know that we're done. Print line. All right, and before we execute, we want to uh, empty the database first. So you see I commented out all the previous inserts, so I'll just run this again, just to give us a fresh database. Just realized, made a small typo here. VID, not UID. And let's clear out the database by running the query again, because I commented out everything else. Now let's go back and let's run this. Oh, duplicate entry? Wait, hmm. That should not happen. Interesting. I'm not sure why that happened, but let's go back to the table. You can see that everything's in, and the table lookup, the uh, vehicle lookup table, everything looks good. So that concludes the second part of the video. How you can insert and fetch data to and from the database with JDBC, the uh, MySQL connector. And remember to like the video if you liked it. Tell all your friends in 201 about this cool head CP guy making videos on YouTube. And I'll see you next time, I guess. And don't forget to start early for homework three because you only have two weeks. Bye.